is geometry chapter 5-2. We're investigating perpendicular and angle bisectors. And so we have four theorems we're working with today. We got the perpendicular bisector theorem, it's converse, an angle bisector theorem, and it's converse. So the perpendicular bisector theorem states that if PM is perpendicular to AB, let me throw some right angles in there before I forget about it. Okay, and MA is congruent to MB. Well, then these two lines, PA and PB, have to be congruent. Well, that's a pretty easy proof because if you look at the two triangles, uh, we have a shared side here, PM. We got reflexive property going on here, so you got side angle side, so by CTCTC. Then um, PA's got to be congruent to PB. So there's the proof for that. Um, next one. Um, oh, then there's a video here. I wanted to show that if you slide point P up and down the perpendicular bisector, yeah, PA and PB are clearly congruent. So is AM and BM. We're good. I'm going to talk about the next theorem. This theorem just says that um, the converse of the perpendicular bisector theorem just says that if PA is congruent to PB, then P must be lying on the perpendicular bisector of AB. Okay. And then let's see the angle bisector theorem. It says if QS bisects angle PQR, so I mark those two angles as congruent, and um, SP is perpendicular to QP, uh, the ray. Um, let's see, SP, okay, yeah, there's your right angle there. And SR is perpendicular to this ray, okay. And no matter how many times I tried to draw this, the program I was using kept drawing that right angle out here. Oh, well. Anyway, we have a shared side here, so and we have a right angle, so we are dealing with uh, angle, angle, side, and angle, angle, side to show those two triangles are congruent. So, of course, um, SP and SR are congruent. Okay. Yeah, so if we're given the converse of this where uh, we have some right angles here from these perpendicular lines, like I said, program force me to have the right angle out there, but anyway, and SP is congruent to SR, then if I draw a ray, a big heavy ray, sort of magic to be able to hit the pause button while being able to record and quickly change a line. Anyway, um, we have a shared side right here, so we're looking at HL theorem to be able to say that this triangle is congruent to that triangle which then would allow you to say CPCTC that this angle is congruent to that angle. Now let's apply these rules. Um, okay. Uh, applying the perpendicular bisector theorem says that um, that if this point D is on uh, perpendicular, you know, perpendicular bisector, then this line segment AD is going to have to be congruent to BD over here. So our setup is going to be, well, you just set the two expressions equal to each other. Look at my great handwriting, sorry. Um, if I subtract x from both sides, then add 17 to both sides, and then divide by 4, x is 6. So there's our solution that x is 6. And if you substitute the 6 back in there, you're going to find out that this side is 13. And all right, next page. Whoops, too far. Um, let's see. Converse perpendicular bisector theorem is going to say that then ultimately this bottom segment here has got to be congruent to that segment. I purposely gave a quadratic because we haven't practiced solving quadratics as much as I'd like to. So the setup for this is is going to be if this is this segment AC has to be congruent to BC. 
So you're going to say that x squared minus 4x is equal to 21. And then back in Algebra 1, we learned that in order to solve a quadratic, we're going to set this equal to 0 and then factor it and solve it. Right, and then you know, we need to recognize that the factors that work here, you know, what multiply to 21 and have a difference of 4 is going to be 7 and 3. And with a negative term in the middle there, that means this 7's got to be negative and this 3's got to be positive. I wrote out the math neatly on the next page. Let's flip to that. Um, so, so I wrote that. I did the same factoring I did in the previous page. Set each factor equal to 0 to solve for x. So you wind up with x being simultaneously, you get 7 and negative 3. So now plug that back in and see which answer you know, makes any sense. We need a positive value for this, this length AC. So I put the 7 in here for x. 7 squared minus 4 times 7. And we ultimately wind up with a length of 21. And then the next step is to test out if the negative 3 works and place that in for x. And then yeah, we're still on the screen. Okay, we're good. So then we're going to have 9 plus 12, and hey, it happens to work for both. We get positive 21. Okay, let me move this back up again. There we go. Next application. Applying the angle bisector theorem says that um, if this bisects this angle, and then these line segments here are perpendicular to the sides of the angle, then these two sides have to be congruent. So let's solve for x. So 3x minus 7. If they're congruent, we can set the two expressions equal to each other. If you subtract x from both sides, we get that. Add the 7 to both sides. and then divide both sides by 2, so you get x is 5, which would then tell you that then this side would both, this side would have to be 8, and so would this. Okay, and our last application, uh, converse of the angle bisector theorem, it says if we have perpendiculars here, and that if these two segments wind up being congruent, then this must be a bisector of this angle. So if it bisects the angle, that means that this angle has to be congruent to that angle. So the setup is, once again, another equality. Divide both sides by 2, we get x is 30. Okay. And I think that's it. So thank you for watching this video.